Welcome to Australian Hiker, your online hiking resource. We're your hosts, Tim and Jill Savage. This is episode 157 of the Australian Hiker podcast. And in this week's episode, we're going to be talking about pack training. Now, physical preparation is a part of getting ready for any hike. For shorter, easier hikes, the training may be almost non-existent, while for longer and more complex hikes, you can spend weeks, if not months, preparing. Training for longer hikes involves many different physical aspects, including cardio and weight training, flexibility training, Lots of walking, both with and without packs. In this podcast, we're going to talk about the do's and don'ts of pack training to help you get the most out of your hike. We hope you enjoy. Now, before we talk about pack training itself, we need to just touch base on a couple of pieces of of relevant equipment that really make a difference to what you're doing. The first and most obvious one is the pack itself. Wherever possible, use the pack that you'll be taking on your hike uh, because what you're trying to do is to replicate the hiking experience itself. So using things like weighted vests or even a totally different pack isn't going to fully prepare you for the trip itself. Yeah, I think that's a really important one and, um, you know, Probably one that we don't think too much about. Um, not everybody has multiple packs. Um, some do, some don't. Isn't that right, Tim? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, often you see people in uh, weighted vests and I think, you know, there's there's a certain amount of, um, uh, I guess, weight training that will provide, but it really is about the comfort and the feel and getting used to all of those elements that are about your usual pack. And I think the thing with um, with using the pack that you're going to be um, hiking with is, as we said, is to try and get the feel for what it's like. And if you load up some random pack that, that you haven't used in years or you aren't going to use, um, you know, all of a sudden you start the first day of your hike and you've got something that just doesn't feel the same that you've been spending the last couple of months training with. The second related gear piece of uh, to consider is the footwear uh, and again you really do want to be using the footwear that you're going to be hiking in um, it's no good wearing something that's comfortable walking on bitumen or concrete if that's not what you're going to be using um, training with a weighted pack in the footwear that you're going to be using will give you a good indication of how those two pieces of gear work well together uh, and what it's going to feel like on your body uh, with the shoes you're going to be wearing. Yeah, and we all know that um, the heavier your shoes, the the more weight it puts on your body, the more pressure it puts on your body. So um, getting used to whatever it is that you've decided is a, is a comfortable um, set of footwear is going to be important. Now we move on to the pack weight itself. And there's a number of different options you've got here to load your pack up. By far the best option is to actually use your equipment that you're going to be taking on your hike. But what we're going to be talking about is doing potentially up to eight weeks worth of preparation. And the last thing you want to do is to have all your hiking gear stuffed into your pack for a period of eight weeks. And your food. And your food as well, yeah. <laughs> so really what you're trying to do is um, you, you, do, you do want to get onto that, and we'll talk about that more specifically in a moment, Um, But really what you're trying to do is to look at options for weighting your pack in the most natural way that you can do. And incrementally as well. Yeah. So traditionally, the figure of 20 to 25% of your body weight has been used as a guide for uh, how much your maximum weight you should be on a hike. And in all honesty, I think that for me is probably a bit too much. Uh, I'm a guy that is sitting around about 100 kilos in weight, uh, and you know, I might, sometimes I might be higher, sometimes lower. Uh, but with eight to nine days worth of food, the most amount of weight that I like to carry in a pack is around about 18 and a half kilos. Uh, anything more than that, I just find it a bit uncomfortable. 
uh, and you know, and, and you're there to have a good time, and you know, you can load the pack up as heavily as you like, uh, but you really do want to be comfortable with what you're doing. And I think if you know, if you talk to some um, personal trainers, if you talk to um, people who look at human physiology, they would say. Um, that 20 to 25 percent is probably a little bit particularly the 25 percent is is a little bit on the high end now for most hikers food and water are probably the biggest variables so if you're carrying up to sort of anything up to 10 days worth of food at a time uh, then this is the total weight that you need to train for Uh, now for me my total average food weight is just under 700 grams per day So if I'm carrying eight days worth of food, which is probably about as much as I like to carry, uh, certainly that's around about five and a half to six kilos uh, additional weight that I'm carrying between the first day and the last day of a hike. Uh, And if it's a a dry set of conditions where you may not have access to a lot of water, I'll potentially be carrying three, potentially four litres of water, which is three to four kilos. So... Certainly um, my base weight, which is everything except the consumables, the food and the water, uh, is around about nine and a half kilos, but add the food, add the water, it's pushing me up around that sort of 18 and a half sort of kilo mark. Yeah, and I really dread those eight days worth of uh, shared food. Uh, Usually the way that we do it is um, I get day one, so we eat day one first, (laughs) which means uh, I offload 700 grams. Uh, times two on on day one, which is a great thing, but uh, still eight days is a, a lot of food split between two. You know, essentially that's four days each. Now let's talk about the things that you need to do when pack training. As we previously mentioned, use the footwear that you'll be using on your hike. Now, if you're going to be using things like boots, uh, uh, leather boots, sometimes they'll need to be worn in, sometimes not so much, depending on which ones they are. Uh, But the last thing you want to do is train in a pair of runners uh, and then put a a pair of leather boots on the first day of your hike. (laughs) Or or vice versa. Yeah, yeah, that's true. If possible, as we said, use the pack you're hiking with, uh, and this will allow you to become familiar with the equipment you'll be using on your actual hike. One comment I would make here is to ensure your pack is adjusted correctly. Now, this would seem like common sense, but I see a lot of incorrectly adjusted packs when I'm out hiking, and even making some minor adjustments uh, will make a huge difference to the comfort of what you're carrying. Now, as far as the weights themselves, um, there's a couple of things that are, work well when trying to load yourself up if you aren't using your actual equipment. And the two options we'd go through and recommend is bags of rice. Uh, and I have three five kilo bags of rice that I tend to use on my hike, my back training hikes. Um, and by the time you add the pack uh, and some blankets and some towels to fill up the spaces, uh, that add, adds a, a, a bit of extra weight on top of that as well. Um, The good thing with the five kilo bags of rice, they tend to be in a heavy um, mesh plasticky sort of uh, sack uh, that you buy at the larger wholesale stores. Uh, And worst case situation, if you run out of food in the house, I've got 15 kilos of rice sitting in the garage in my training pack. That that rice is getting pretty old though, Tim. I'm not sure that I'd be wanting to eat that. The other option is to use water. Now, if you are using water, you don't want to carry one large drum or jerry can that you put into the pack. That just blows my mind that you would even consider putting a hard container inside your pack. But anyway. Um, You're better off having smaller containers that you can uh, take in and out of your pack. Um, But you also don't want to have a large container that's half empty. Because what's going to happen is the water is going to slosh around in your pack uh, and create a bit of unbalancing as you walk. So try and have full containers and smaller containers that you can adjust as you go. I think the thing to highlight here is that um, the reason that we're talking about, you know, five kilo bags of rice and uh, containers of water is that you want entities that are sufficiently bulky in size to fit within your pack. 
So, you know, there are other options. You could fill it up with, you know, a million pieces of small weights or, you know, uh, um, weights in um, or weights that are packaged in bags, lead weights, that kind of thing. Um, but you're using much more of those and they don't sit well in your pack. So you really need something that is a bit bulky and weighty um, so it can sit centrally in your pack. Now, the advantage with using water is if you are going uphill, you can actually empty the water out when you reach the top of the hill uh, and walk back down. It's just going to look weird. Yeah, it, it does. Um, but it means you're walking downhill and reducing the pressure on your knees as you're coming downhill. Um but I must admit, it is worthwhile walking down the hill with a weighted pack occasionally as well, because you know on a real hike, that's what you're going to be. That's what you're going to be doing. You can't really offload all your gear and walk down. Um, you've got to take it with you. There are moments when I wish I could do that. But <laughs> um, and as we mentioned, use towels or blankets to provide a, a stable pack and to fill any spaces. Use a variety of terrain. Don't just walk up hills or walk on bitumen or concrete paths. Get out into a variety of hiking trails and surfaces to replicate what you're going to be doing in real life. One of the disadvantages of walking on a hard surface like concrete and bitumen, um, it's not really going to represent what you're doing on your hike. Uh, it tends to put a bit more stress on your legs as well. Um, and I think walking on uneven uh, natural trail where there's small rocks and you know it's not smooth flat um, it gives you a bit more stability and strength in the ankles as, you, as you're walking as well so you know getting out there on real hiking tracks uh, with a weighted pack is a good way to go vary the distances that you walk don't just walk the same distance over and over again during the last few months, uh, due to the pandemic, I um, started walking around uh, our suburb and I managed to identify a route that's about about five kilometres long. Uh, and that certainly is one of my main training routes that I use. But I also use one of my local mountains, which is about three and a half kilometres uphill and down, uh, as well as uh, picking on other trails uh, that are a bit longer that have some up sections and down sections and flat sections as well. Build up your pack weight slowly to allow your body to get used to the weight. So the, the, the thing you don't want to do is to say, right, I'm starting pack training tomorrow and putting a 20 kilo pack on your back when you haven't been using a pack for quite a while. Yeah, you probably won't come back the next week <laughs> and you may not even make the hike that you're planning. <laughs> Um, so from my perspective, I do a range of physical preparation for the hike. As I said, I do weight training in a gym. Uh, I do cardio training. Uh, I do uh, strength, uh, flexibility training. Uh, and I do pack tra uh, walking, including with and without a pack. For me, I start using or doing pack training eight weeks out. Uh, and I... My schedule tends to be the first week, eight weeks out, I'm using a five kilo pack. Uh, seven and six weeks out, I'm wearing a 10 kilo pack. Uh, five weeks out and four weeks out, I go shift to a 15 kilo pack. Uh, and then three and two weeks to go, I'm going to a 20 kilo pack. Now, I'm usually not carrying that much weight. So at 20 kilos, I'm carrying more than I would be when I start my hike. But what that means is when I put my pack on at the start of day one for my hike, it actually feels a bit lighter than I'm used to uh, and I, I can comfortably start off walking. I think that's just a psychological trick, Tim. <laughs> I'm sure it is. Now, I didn't mention the last week. In the last week, uh, basically no weighted pack training and this allows your body to recover before you start on your walk. Now, my final weighted pack training session is with my full gear. Uh, and this is where I put all my gear in my pack, uh, including my food, because it's, it's a week to go and I've, I've, I've actually prepared all my food at this stage. And this is what's called a shakedown hike, where you get to go on a hike or even do a, you know, whether it be a day hike or an overnight hike, to see how things work, test everything out to make sure it goes okay. 
Now we'll just talk about things not to do when pack training. And again, this is pretty much um, the reverse of what we've talked about previously. So don't use kettlebells or plate weights for pack training. Again, this just is mind-boggling for me (laughs) with these clumsy things that you've got in your pack that would just not work. And I think that's the issue with using them. Uh, Quite often people will have small weights or kettlebells at home, but they're very concentrated sort of weights. They're putting all the weight into one small area of the pack and they're not replicating what you're going to be doing on the trail. Uh, they, they don't tend to sit well, even if you stuff them with blankets. Um, so as I said, it's better off sticking to, to water or rice. As we mentioned, don't use the large single drums. Don't go too heavy, too hard, too soon. So build up to your maximum weight training over a period of weeks. Uh, but don't start too early on the, the heavy weight training as well. Uh, And don't just walk around your neighbourhood. Get out on real hiking trails. Now, a few years ago, we interviewed Joe Bonington from Joe's Base Camp, uh, and we talked about preparing for a hike. Um, And as part of that, that we would like to bring you a short segment of Joe's interview where he talks about pack training. If we train uh, athletes who are, you know, their livelihood, their income depends on their performance, they only spend a small portion of their time before competition absolutely peaking. And everything before that is either laying foundations, building, cycling. Then we peak before whatever competition it is, and then we go. And you can apply exactly the same principles to to any outdoor and adventure sport, you know. So, um, for example, if we're training somebody for a a trek or for a a multi-stage walk, um, we then, we start them out uh, with a, a base. We then build on their base. We then have a phase which we call the climb phase, which kind of transitions between the base and the peak. And then we have the peak phase. So imagine on the base phase, we might be getting up there with volume, with walking uh, and stuff, but we're only uh, carrying light loads, maybe 5% of body weight, etc. cetera. Um, and then uh, we start to ramp it up during the climb phase. Uh, we might be going uh, 10%, 15% of body weight. And then when we get to the peak phase, that's when we're doing the 20% of body weight. Uh, that's when we're doing uh, our really high intensity uh, work that you only want to do for between four and eight weeks before uh, before you trip. Um, especially with things like what we call uphill sports. A lot of the time we're ha- having to carry load uh, on our backs. Now, Carrying load on our backs is great. Carrying load downhill again isn't. No, it's now, not my favourite thing no, to do. <laughs> and and the, the thing is, we have to do it. So when we're out there in the middle of nowhere, we, we have to carry. We have to carry up. We have to carry down. But our knees can actually only take so much. So we don't want to, in training, be loading the knees with heavy loads all the way through the track, you know. So in the old days, people said, oh, if you're going to walk, just get out, put a pack on and walk. Um, and there's a lot of people, unfortunately, who, whose whole uh, enjoyment of adventure has been cut short because now their knees are, are absolutely shot, you know. And, uh, you know, and there's plenty and plenty of climbers as well. So um, uh, people like Doug Scott, who uh, was summited the southwest face of uh, Everest in 1975. Uh, and he's now had uh, two knee replacements and, uh, and, uh, and all this. And, and, you know, he had to stop his trekking quite a, quite a while ago from years and years of carrying heavy loads up and down trails. I, I must admit, I uh, uphill... On the flat, not a problem. Downhill, this yeah. is, this is, I, I slow right down, and, and certainly the, uh, the tracking poles have made a big difference for me. It just takes a lot of the weight off. Master, no, so, okay, can I? I'll, I'll give a, a couple of quick tips here. So, if we can, you know, in, in the whole of this uh, podcast, if there's a couple of bits of, of information that I can give away, is uh, use poles. Poles are brilliant. Now, and I, I, you know, here I am, I'm, I'm very obviously, I'm an Englishman. 
um, and living and training Australians. Um, and I don't know whether it's uh, a machismo thing or whatever, but Poles are not half as popular here, even a quarter as popular as they are in Europe. Um, and I do think people, oh, no, no, I don't want Poles. You know, they, you know, and it's the, the science, just go on science. The science shows if you want to keep walking for, for the whole of your life and bushwalking and doing some great things, you can save up to 30% of the load through the knees yeah. uh, on downhill um, by using poles. You know, even if you just take them with you, carry them until you get to the downhill, mm. but use bloody poles. Mm. Um, they, they really do make a massive difference. Um, the other thing is uh, during training, if you do want to train uh, for something, if you've got a big hill near you and a water source, a great tri uh, tip is get a dry bag. Um, and if you're doing what we call pack training, so where you are loading a pack with different weights and, and carrying it somewhere, um, get a big dry bag. I fill it with roughly a, at a river or from a tap or whatever with uh, the amount of water to create roughly the amount of weight that you want. Walk up the hill uh, as hard as you can and then empty it at the top. Go back down again with an empty pack with no load. Fill it up again, start again and go to the top. We actually had someone we met on the Lara Pinta Trail last year. He went to uh, Coles, I think it was, and bought one of the, the 10 kilo water jugs mm. and, and, and just put that in his pack rather than putting a, a metal weight or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it worked quite well for him. That's, that, that's, uh, that's a definitely really, really good tip. The other thing there as well is if you are pack training, please, please, please make sure you pack your pack like you were packing a yeah. pack. Uh, the amount of people who stuff their backs up because they let, you know, putting a kettlebell or putting a, a 10 kilo plate in a pack and just letting it sit there is not like, ten, uh, is not like a tent, your gear, uh, you know, all your bits and pieces, your food and all that. So what we tend to do is we get lots of towels and we'll get uh, uh, bags of rice and put the a towel, bag of rice, towel, bag of rice, towel, bag of rice, towel, bag of rice. So if you're doing that style of pack loading, you can do it like that. I must admit, I, I, I definitely agree on that one. I've seen so many people that do get the, the plate weights into there, and it's just, it, it doesn't represent what you're really doing in the real world. No, no. And it, it, it teaches about, you know, you, you, a pack should be well fitted. Um, and when you've got a plate like that, it's, it's not, it's not going to sit right on the hips. It's, it's, it's a disaster. Okay, so we hope that uh, that uh, advice from Joe uh, has been helpful. One comment that I would make here, and it's an interesting one, that Joe recommends starting that uh, pack training around about the eight-week period out, not sort of three or four or five or six months out. Um, yes, you will be doing uh, training with your pack, but you're not going to be doing your full-weighted pack six months out from a hike. For my long-distance hikes, I typically will start training around about seven months before I actually start on the trip itself. But as mentioned, my weighted pack training starts about two months out. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, I definitely would support uh, what Joe was saying. When we went to Bhutan a number of years ago, uh, one of the things that we both commented on was that we we think we hit our peak about a month before our trip, <laughs> which probably wasn't the great thing to do. Um, and you know, lots of enthusiasm and, and lots of training, uh, which was fantastic. Uh, how, however, we did find that it meant that we weren't prepared in the moment that we needed to be prepared. And we did dip down a little bit in terms of um, our fitness, partly through fatigue. Um, but yeah, eight weeks I think is good. Uh, don't peak too early. <laughs> Now, just some final thoughts on the, the whole process of pack training. The thing to remember that if training for a hike is something new to you or you haven't done much physical exertion for a while, you should always check with your doctor to make sure there aren't any issues. It's also worthwhile getting in touch with a fitness professional 
uh, one that's experienced in hiking, as they'll be able to help you get the most out of your training. I've seen so many people start multi-day and multi-week hikes having done little or no preparation, including physical training. And while pack training seems like uh, an additional piece of exertion to your schedule that you won't necessarily uh, really get much benefit out of, you'll greatly appreciate it when you hit the trail, when there are no surprises when you first put on your fully loaded pack on day one. And, you know, I think the thing to remember is that it, it just makes the whole experience a little bit more enjoyable the more prepared you are. And as the last comment, as we mentioned, don't forget to do the shakedown hike where you go for a hike uh, with all your gear, including your food, to provide you with an opportunity to ensure that things work the way it should. That's all for this week's episode. In episode 158 to be released next week, uh, we're going to be doing something slightly different and we're going to be talking about snowshoeing. So that should be an interesting one. That's all for this week. Bye for now. And bye from me.